I have uh, the knack or whatever it is that takes uh, screen sharing. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay. So does that show the correct slides or is it my presenter view? It looks great. Ah, okay. Well, okay, so um, Meg is on here. She is my uh, co-presenter today. So as you can imagine, as you've already figured out, um, our team, our University of Florida team, uh, approached the topic of how do library spaces facilitate innovative research, creative thinking, and problem solving. Um, let's see here. So I am Valerie Minson. I am chair of Marston Science Library where we conducted the research. Um, and I'm also assistant dean of assessment. Um, Meg, who is also on here, Dr. Meg Portillo. Meg, you wanna introduce yourself real quick? Sure, Val. Um, I have been involved um, in this project um, from the design perspective, we have an engaged design uh, lab in the Department of Interior Design and Jason Manili Shilabash and our uh, graduate assistant Adrian Del Monte came from the design side. Thanks, Val. Yeah. So when we first submitted our application to, to explore this research topic, we kind of didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. And so it was just the four of us within the library side of things. But once we started developing our study, we realized we, we, re we needed the expertise from the interior design side of things. And luckily, um, Jason and Meg and Adrian and Sheila were all really uh, excited uh, and enthusiastic to participate. And I think they've done a lot. Uh, they've added so much to our our research project. So um, Laura and Sarah and Jean and all the others who aren't here today really wanted to be here, but um, uh, they've left it with Meg and I. So our team developed a mixed method study that included a spatial analysis, a survey utilizing an adjective checklist and several focus groups to validate the adjective checklist. Um, this study identified the following questions. How do research libraries facilitate innovative cre innovation, creativity, and problem solving competencies among its patrons? What are students' ideal space needs for specific floors within Marston? And, and what kinds of unique study environments do they require? Um, we also uh, identified how do current MSL floors compare to the students' ideal space needs? and how might MSL or Marston Science Library, sorry, better support the different study dimensions to identify building capabilities. And so we did that with these, uh, with these four areas of, uh, of our research study. And beginning with the spatial analysis, we did eight observations per floor, um, 30 minutes each, and that was in January of 2020. So this was right before COVID hit. We were still very busy in our, in our space. Um, and this spatial analysis was conducted by Adrian Del Monte. Uh, and he gave us a baseline for thinking about the ways the library was designed um, with individual group and public or communal and private spaces, all sort of laid out um, within the current uh, floor plan. Um, and then he looked at how students truly use those spaces in different ways. And the analysis showed that individual student use is frequently happening in group design spaces and that the need for multiple types of group and individual spaces were indicated um, based on this activity. And so these floor maps show, uh, show the use of the different floors at both high and low volume periods. On this slide, we illustrate how we surveyed students using the adjective checklist um, in which we used 14 adjective pairs. And so you had something like exciting uh, and gloomy or public, private, social, unsocial. And we identified in the design literature, um, th these had been identified in design literature as one way of assessing how students feel in different spaces. 
So we used images as visual prompts because we ended up with an online survey rather than an intercept survey, um, which had been planned prior to COVID. So the images show the difference between how students feel about the current space um, on the left compared to um, their ideal space um, or a renovated entry floor, which gave us some ideas for future changes. And then what are findings, the overall findings from this, from um, the intercept survey uh, was that grad graduate students need, graduate student needs are very similar to undergraduates. And in fact, what we found was that graduate students want to be very inclusive of their undergraduate studiers and under and and don't need to isolate themselves within a very particular floor or have a, a dedicated space. Um, primary usage is for individual study or, or singular person study for both groups. Um, and as I said, there's not a clear mandate for a graduate only floor. The makerspace technology was not a focus for students. So while we have a makerspace and we care a lot about um, how it's used and it's um, and and uh, and the type of space that we provide students really weren't the students who participated in the study um, were more focused on computers and outlets and strong Wi Fi and and just dedicated space. And this is Meg's turn. Sure, sure. thanks Val. So. Um, as we uh, got further engaged from the design side to, uh, the, you know, into um, really trying to tap into what the space felt like and, and how it served the students and how it could be improved, we moved into more of a studio uh, learning model. And this involves the students um, working in small teams, generating ideas and concepts and playing those through into more uh, technical ideas. The process was, was fueled by the research that we collected on uh, over 300 respondents to the survey and also um, focus, inter uh, focus interviews. So Val, next slide, please. And you're going to see a sampling of images that our students generated. These are this is original work. The teams um, were in groups of four to five, and they presented to uh, both constituents from the library that were on the research project, as well as other uh, faculty in the design and architecture area at a midpoint review, and then used that input to even fuel their and develop their ideas further in, in the endpoint. A thing that was great about the collaboration is, as you know, there are many different ways that you can enhance space. It's not a singular right answer. So this really gives um, the team at Marsden um, and the decision makers, um, you, I'm sure know um, Dean Judy Russell and others some some real you know um, some different options that you can pull together and and really help uh, design the library not just for the immediate few years but but well into the future by having going from a base of more evidence uh, informed design. So next slide, please. So essentially, um, the students were focusing on creating a sense of place. It was a shift from I like this design or I like how this looks to, to getting at a deeper level of uh, placemaking. And also thinking students are not just working individually, although there, there's a role for that, but they're working in different teams and smaller teams and larger teams. What became central to our approach, and we saw this bubbling up across um, the design studio teams, was really um, trying to empower those who studied and worked in the libraries, as well as the 
as the library uh, staff in terms of offering a lot of possibilities for choice and control. So this, if you, the students were working there at times for fairly long periods um, and they might want to pivot to a different kind of space as they moved through um, the work they needed to do. And especially we were focusing on some higher end creative uh, work and research. We also, um, again, some of the choice and control you'll see in the different range and variety of seating options, as well as creating a strong synergy with the natural environment. Val, next slide. And again, here you can see um, around the periphery of this space. And again, this is original work generated by a juniors in our studio. You can see students getting uh, a, an anchoring sense around the per periphery of the room, um, being close to nature and natural viewpoints. You can see others that are almost up in a prone position on the floor, different kinds of tablets for different kinds of work and preferences. Okay, next slide. And again, this is kind of interesting because what you're looking at is essentially about the same size space and the way you can block it in different areas through design to create um, larger groups um, and, and also think about how you might serve uh, individual focused studying. Next slide. Um, again, the students really pulled um, from nature. There was that sense of biophilia that goes beyond having um, plants, but more of an infusion within the space that would help reduce um, some tension and anxiety that we're even seeing in, that we were seeing in students before the pandemic, but certainly became um, heightened in not only students, but in, in people of all ages and, and that use our spaces and students of all ages. So again, um, we're starting to see through materials and inspirations and we're going outside Marsden Library and trying to pull some of that um, balm from nature into the interiors. Okay, next slide. And Val, do you have a final send off and thank you? I just want to thank everyone who has who contributed. I mean, because we didn't do this just us. This it took. I mean, we talked to Stephanie McReynolds at Syracuse. She, you know, she had sort of had some questions about the adjective check, checklist, and that helped us sort of develop that 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 idea, that concept. Um, you know, we've uh, and then we also had presented at three of the ARL workshops. And I think that was really helpful for us to, um, to, de to develop sort of its, our studies usefulness more broadly to be applied at other institutions, so. And I might just quickly add, um, Adrian and I presented uh, this work at a national design conference and Adrian won a top award um, for it in terms of showing a really strong synergy between design making an impact on, on the larger campus, so. Greg, we wanna hand it to you. 